So one of the things that I get asked quite often, and it's an important question, is what do you actually do? Um, you know, we get that you write code, you're a front-end developer, but what does that entail in the workplace? What are some of the things that, hey, we, you know, I may, you're not going to know that is kind of a common practice or kind of uh, a way of doing things or, you know, basically what is, what is your average day like as a developer? And it changes on a day-to-day -day basis, but I'm going to do my best to kind of explain to you what I actually do as a front-end developer on a daily basis. Hey guys, I uh, just want to do a quick shout out to our boys at Dev Mountain who have been supporting the channel for quite a long time. It is appreciated. So if you're looking for a coding boot camp, they provide housing. They also have after hours classes, online classes. I, I definitely would encourage you if you're interested in that, doing the in-person, full-time, living in a, 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 a apartment together with a bunch of other people who are striving to be developers. I think it's a cool experience. Something I would personally love to do. Dev Mountain, hook me up. No, uh, but uh, I hopefully if you're interested, check them out at devmountain.com. Just want to start by saying that if you're interested in the Bro Do You Even Code shirt, there's a link in the description below. You'll help me out in the process and uh, help pay me pay for school. So it's a good cause. Uh, anyhow, so what do I do as a front end developer on a daily basis? Well, uh, as I mentioned, it kind of changes uh, based on the day of the week and what priorities are. So let's try and give a general overview. Well, for one, uh, most workplaces I've worked at, actually all workplaces I've worked at, have been in an agile environment. And what that basically means is that everything is moving at all the time and things are constantly in flux <laughs> and that you're trying to be adaptive is a, a nice way of putting it. And so in an agile environment, you have things called stand-ups, which are essentially a daily meetup where everyone typically is standing, hence the name stand-up. You're basically talking about what it is that you're working on what you, what, what have you worked on? What are you going to work on? And if you need any help, right? The, the, no one wants you to twiddle your thumbs for hours on end. If somebody's already worked in the application you're working in, or if you've attempted something and you're unable to solve it, it's your chance to sort of reach out and say, Hey, maybe I can, maybe I need additional details. So I tell my project manager, or maybe I, I want the, um, the business requirements to be a little bit more clear so i reach out to my business analyst and i say hey can you follow up on this you know what is the acceptance criteria what is the this the acceptance criteria being things that what do how do i know when i'm done with this project right and uh in the documentation it should have something some acceptance criteria what are there additional user stories meaning as a user i want i want to be able to log in with my fingerprint because Sometimes I'm an idiot and I forget my, my password, right? So, um, you know, do we need additional user stories? Do we need additional tickets? And it's kind of your, your quick uh, stand-up to sort of go through that very briefly, very, very briefly. Maybe uh, typically I'm on a team of about five to six people and they're 15 minutes in total. Not like 15 minutes for me, 15 minutes in total. So you have about 90 seconds to two minutes to pop and you move on, right? Um, so it's kind of your chance to just let everyone know what you're up to if you need any help and move forward. And you'll do that pretty much daily, right? And then and then you go back to your desk or wherever it is you're working and uh, you'll, you'll start working on the tickets, right? Where those user stories have been assigned and groomed, uh, meaning refined, and start knocking out these tickets. And sometimes there'll be bug fixes Sometimes there will be uh, features, additional features, and sometimes it'll just be greenfield development where you're building stuff from scratch, right? You're starting a brand new Angular Spa, and and you get to have a lot of sort of leeway with it. And kind of the my experience with it is when it's more of an internal application, and a lot of us will be building a lot of CRUD apps in uh, most front-end roles, if you're working for a company, you'll build, be building in-house tools a lot of the time. It, it changes by a, by company, by company basis, obviously. But if you're working for a company that isn't trying to sell software, a lot of it is building in-house tools. And that's what I build a lot of. I build a lot of uh, CRUD applications, create, retrieve, update, delete, right? Uh, the, the rest sort of applications that would allow uh, an in-house user to do something like maybe they want to have a report admin tool or maybe they want to have a link generator that 
they can generate custom links that will redirect them to other pages and it's shorter or something, it, whatever it is, right? You're, it's your job to do that. And oftentimes you'll have a user story that will have about as much of an explanation as I've just given. And what ends up happening is you as a developer, you kind of have some leeway. They're like, well, I know what the objective is, right? And this this is not at every company, but this is kind of my, my general day, I would say. And I've worked at three companies, three software companies now. And I had one company who had fantastic documentation where it would go into details and as into how many parameters functions would have and things like that. It's kind of, it was kind of nuts. And the other, the other two companies, a little bit more leeway, um, a little bit more. Here is a paragraph for an entire spa. Now make it work, Dylan. All right. And, and that's fine. I have no problem either way. Um, it's kind of it's kind of funny that way to be honest, and uh, I think that's more common of what you're going to be seeing is that a lot of times when you when you're dealing with project managers and business analysts, nine times out of ten they don't have a developer background. Nine times out of ten they've never coded a day in their life, and it's kind of hard to ask the right questions as a developer. So you know we'll use the report admin tool. We're building a admin tool so that we can create custom reports, right? As a developer, I start thinking about things that are needed uh, that I would ask if I was gathering the requirements that need to be answered. Um, part of that is there's a big difference between uh, creating the database and 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 uh, the data model, and on the front end, you know, we can move stuff around a little bit easier, but it still kind of sucks <laughs> when when the when the objective changes. So. Um, when you're in a, a situation where I, and I, th I think you'll be in this situation more often than not, where the requirements are brief, um, the acceptance criteria is brief or non-existent. And that gives you a little bit of leeway. And it, it's nice because it, you get to sort of be the creator at the end of the day where you're saying, okay, if I was building you know, said report admin tool, what would it be that I would add and how would I deliver this? Because maybe they they just said, look, I want to be able to create a report as a title, it has permissions, and it has the data. And then you're thinking, okay, well, I can deliver that. And with a look, and how am I going to deliver it is up to me at the end of the day. And maybe I can even throw out a couple of suggestions. Hey, you know, I'm already in here. I was thinking that we could add these dynamic filters or something like that, where now we're in the query string that we're passing in, we have this additional one that's, that allows us to take that data set and automatically in the URL, maybe filter the data down by a date parameter that we passed in in, in the query string or something, right? And, but the, the idea being that you have a general objective and it's your idea, your job to deliver that objective however you see fit most of the time. And so, that's a lot of what I do is I, I build these tools and I, I maintain them and I, I work with other people, um, other developers, front end and back end. And oftentimes I found myself as a front end developer. And this is something I wasn't comfortable saying uh, early on, but as a front end, specifically front end developer, uh, typically um, you will be able to deliver things pretty quickly in my opinion, compared to maybe back end. Um, and so, what ends up happening is um, when, when working on projects as a front end developer, um, the back end holds the front end up, the front end never holds the back end up. What I mean by that is the back end's job is to deliver data and create services for the front end to consume. As a front end developer, I have to consume those API endpoints. I have to go and use those, get that data. And it's part of, for me, I don't work on tickets anymore. And I wasn't super comfortable saying this, uh, but it's kind of a, I, one of the things you have to get over being a, a developer is stepping outside your comfort zone and being okay, being a, a assertive, uh, when you know you're in the right. Right. And so it's not, not to say that you can't listen to other people's points of view or anything like that, but you, you have to be okay saying, Hey, this is a bad waste of my time. Let's, we're going to change our process a little bit. And so, um, the reason I bring that up because I think it's crucial and I, th I think a lot of front end devs when they get started will just build what they can and then wait for the service that gets delivered a week later and then you got to jump into this project that's been sort of mangled because the data structures changed and all this sort of stuff. So typically what I like to do is I like to wait for the service to be complete or semi-complete 
<laughs> and then uh, go and fin and the and then start the front end because the back end can go and make their their postman calls or whatever it is to test their own service and they have Jenkins it, so that when it's done you'll be able to view it and whatnot. But uh, they, they're never waiting on the front end. It's the front end that is waiting on the back end. Not to say that like back end developers are lazy or anything like that. That's just that's just the process, right? So. The other thing that I do on a daily basis as I'm writing that is I write unit tests. Uh, I do test driven development. So what that basically means is you write tests as you code and you test your code that way. So as you're going to write a function before you even write the function or immediately after is really usually how it goes. You write tests that will test the logic so that if something changes as you're building out your spa, you'll be notified because you have your tests running on another monitor or whatever that says, hey, you know, only 50 out of 51 tests pass. Why did that one test fail? And it's because your logic changed where maybe here you're expecting a, uh, a number and you got a string or whatever, whatever it may be. And the value changed and the type changed or, and now your, your whole logic is broken and that's to help you as well as when people go in to make updates to your features, to your spas that they don't have to, you know, they're not going to know it as well as you are. There's so many moving parts in any sort of major major team. I'm on a team of about 30 people, not on my like dedicated team, but there's about 30 developers, actual people writing code at the company that I work at. And so you can imagine where there's code bases I haven't touched, haven't heard of, uh, you know, so um, imagine you have to jump into that. You want to, you want to not only be able to read through the code, make sure it's very readable, but you also want tests to sort of say, okay, well, let's make sure I didn't break anything when I went here and changed it. And they're not going to catch everything, but it does help. Uh, another thing that's, that's pretty common that a lot of people don't, don't, um, don't, um, necessarily think about it, or is uh, pull requests. Pull requests are probably my favorite part, not my favorite part, but one of my more favorite parts of being a developer. So what is a pull request? Well, Pull request really just refers to, ugh, this is a bad drink. Um, it's like a vitamin packet, not very good. <laughs> um, so a uh, pull request refers to essentially you've completed a, a feature, you completed your code, you know, your ticket that we got from, from the PM and the BA. Uh, all right, cool. You know, I finished this feature. Now let's go ahead and submit my code for a pull request where and everyone's everyone's workplace is going to be different. Some places won't even do it. And what it basically means is we're going to review Dylan's code. We're going to go through it and it's going to show, okay, well, Dylan changed these 400 lines of code, highlight it for us in, in whatever tool you're using. And then we're going to say, all right, well, I see you did it this way. Are you sure this is what you meant to do? Or, hey, did you know that this is a better way of doing the same thing? And that's one of the reasons I like that, even though it's kind of frustrating, right? You worked on these tickets and you want to get them out a lot of times and there's deadlines, all that sort of stuff. Um, the reason that I like that is that is an opportunity for you to grow, right? Not only when your code gets reviewed, do you get educated, but when you're reviewing other people's code, you get to become f more familiar with the code base as well as better and um, be better coding, better practices. We're like, oh, you know what? It is right where instead of me doing a for loop here, it'd be much cleaner if I just use the spread operator or something, whatever it is. And you learn from those people who have more years experience or even less years experience. We're just better developers, right? They they are doing something in a, in a cooler and better way. And it could be something very, very small, right? I remember being in college doing code reviews and in, in not like an official like job code review, but we were essentially reviewing other people's code and I had never seen a ternary operator and I've been using them ever since. And it could be, it could happen in anything. You gotta be very open to it. And it's a great way for you, for your code to, for you to grow as a developer. But the main point behind it is to make sure that you don't submit bootleg ass busted code and that, you know, you're going to say, okay, well, this is how I would have done it. Some things are suggestions. Some things are like, yo, man, this is not going to work. I don't know how you even submitted this. Uh, hopefully you, you review your code before you submit it. Right. But that, that's a major part of my day. I do uh, pull requests every single day. It's a great way to to learn it's a great way to get more familiar with the code base as well as to see what other people are working on right um 
and that's, I mean, that's really what I do on a daily basis. I do PRs, I do testing, I kind of communicate. Sometimes you have to go and, and, um, work on other teams and sometimes you get projects assigned and, and sometimes you are, uh, you know, my boss came up to me the other day and, and said, he came up to me, to my desk, like a week ago, he was like, Hey, you feeling overwhelmed yet? So no, man, I'm good. He's like, you want to be overwhelmed? And then before you know it, you have a project assigned to you, right? That has a, a one week deadline or whatever it is. And, and sometimes it's, sometimes everything's very smooth and crazy. And sometimes it's hectic because, you know, someone above you said, Hey, uh, there's this event going on and we want to get something out. We understand it's three weeks. Can you make it happen? And everybody as a developer, I can do it. <laughs> I ain't got no problem. I'll deliver. And um, because most of the time we, we like to say in a perfect world, it will take one week. Uh, in an unperfect world, it will take three weeks. And so what happens is you have two weeks of time. And then oftentimes there's hiccups along the way in development. But the what I guess my the reason I share that is I want to... I want you guys to understand that your days are going to change. It's going to be sort of an ebb and flow, smooth, crazy, dull. Uh, but your days are going to, you have to be willing to understand that when you're working for a company, um, things are changing. Because <laughs> at the end of the day, they're, just, they're the same thing. They're just people making decisions who are going to um, decide what you're working on and what's important and what's not important and how, how big of a deal it is. And so be ready for that. It's, uh, it's something that I enjoy. I enjoy the chaos, right? I'm not a very structured individual. It's one of the reasons I didn't do very well in school. So I enjoy the chaos to sort of like, the world is burning, let's put the fires out right now. And uh, it's a little boring when the world isn't burning. <laughs> not saying I go out and light fires, but I, I'm happy to put them out and do my part. Um, so that's kind of my day on a daily basis is, uh, I communicate with my team, what it is I'm working on. If I need any help, I build things, I fix things. And then I, um, I help, uh, provide insight on certain things when asked for. And then I, I, uh, I do pull requests, um, testing, all that sort of stuff. And then I help out, help out the other developers, help out QA, right? So you have quality assurance who you have to send your code to and they're, they're the ones. So they, it goes through the pull request. And then it goes to uh, QA on, on a testing environment or something like that. And they say, okay, um, let's see if I can break Dylan's code. No, <laughs> no. But uh, it's their job to make sure that we, the developers have done our testing. We've done our own in internal review. And now it's the pull request to be like, hey, did you think about doing this in Safari 1? What if all the Safari 1 users? No. <laughs> but uh, sometimes there'll be some testing. And... And uh, they may try some use cases you didn't think of, which is their job. And then you might have to go back and fix that. Um, but yeah, so that's basically what I do on a daily basis. If I had to sum it up into one big, I guess, 17 minute video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, thank you for watching. If you're interested in getting a Bro Do You Even Code shirt, the link is in the description. I appreciate you all. Don't forget to support me on Patreon. All that good stuff. Like, subscribe, share. It is, uh, channel's been growing a little bit. It's been nice, so I appreciate that, guys. So I'll see you next time. Bye. Hey, baby, what do you think I do every day at work? Definitely not the dishes. Hey, guys, if you're looking for a fun little project to do, I have my very first course out called Learn Angular by Projects Part 1, where we build a personal portfolio. It's about three hours of content. It's one project. It's not going to teach you everything in Angular by any means, but it's a great way to get your feet wet. You can go ahead and check the link down below. Get a, a coupon code, Coding God, or just click the icon.